Well, this is usually my my writing space. I mean, that's what I'm that's what I'm here to do as a as a writer. But it's also become since my partner Christina last year gave me a new set of canvases to work with. It's also become the place where I where I paint. Um, but it's not it's not that I started to paint on the west coast since moving here to the Isle of Seal. I have painted on and off through through my adult years. And it's partly actually, and I say this with a wry smile, it's partly a response to childhood and school years where I was I feel as though I was disliked intensely by art teachers for never being able to to do things particularly well, certainly not the things that they wanted me to do. And when I left school, I did actually start to paint a bit, really as a response to that, thinking, even though they have told me almost not to paint or draw, I still want to. And it's always been the West Coast that I've been drawn to. So long before I moved to Argyll and to Seal, it's seascapes that I've that I've been been drawn to. I remember my my wee girl Willow running in here the first time she came to see my studio, came to see the house here on the west coast. She ran in here and her eyes took in the paintings that were around the walls, sitting on tops of bookcases and sitting on the floor. And her first comment was, but they're all the same. And I was most I was most amused at that. Because yes, most of my work, and I'll be talking a wee bit more about that later on, most of it is West Coast, not all of it. But I feel, well, I've reached my 50s now, however many years I'm blessed with um, that remain, I will never have been able to conquer, I will never have been able to capture the Atlantic in all its moods in those years. And it's my battle to try to catch the sea and the waves um, with greater perfection. I just eternally love the West and I eternally love our West Coast waters, the Atlantic Sea. And so I'm happy with that challenge. To say a wee bit about the work generally, I tend to do all my paintings on a carpet which is at the heart of this room which might be focused on. So I sit with a canvas, I literally crouch on the floor on that carpet with the canvas and I start playing with it and I do almost all the painting work with my hands. So sea, sky, waves, rocks, all of that is done tentatively through work with my fingers. So I come into the house again at the end of the day if I've been painting, unable to touch door handles, walls. Christina adamant that I go and get my hands clean before I do anything else. Because all of it is smearing and smudging paint into sky to create, to create the exact colour of, of skies that I want and the balance between seas and skies and rocks in between. The only time I do use a brush, very occasionally, is to try to create more exact. If I'm creating a, a very strong rough, for example, we're focusing very usefully there on the mountain, and you can see where there's been a bit of brushwork to create the sharp spine of that, the porcupine spine, if you like, the ridge of the back there. That's the only time I will use a paintbrush. Otherwise it's all smudging. Smudging for, for everything really that I that I do. There's one picture in my present exhibition which is not a seascape, which is really representative of for me, of the inland world that I've left. I grew up in Highland Perthshire and I, I love that part of Scotland dearly. And 
Perhaps that's why I love the West so much, because it was a counterpoint to it. Um, I felt very remote from the sea at that time, growing up, and loved coming to the West Coast on, on holiday. But to talk about, about this one, that my one mountain in the exhibition, I love high places in inland Scotland. I used to go as a child to high hill lochs where my mum would fish and I love trying to capture that. Also here is obviously a, a winter scene. I'm trying to capture a perfect winter day with flitches, bits of snow lying around in the lower moorland and the high hill covered and the hard, far ridges covered in snow. I should say too that neither these mountain places in inland Scotland that I'm trying to capture, nor the west coast places are usually specific places at all. Uh, what I like to capture or try to capture is the spirit of the place. They're not specific locations. The seascapes are not of specific islands or specific places I've known in childhood. They're trying to capture the spirit of the Atlantic or the spirit of that upland world. In this painting, I'm really trying to do something that I'm, I'm constantly fascinated by. It's a sense of little tiny beaches in different corners of the West. So that contrast between rocks, wild rock and tiny beach. In a sense, it's one entire beach that's broken up by, by rocks and it's just part of the enduring fascination of the West and the Hebrides. And also the changing of, of color, the wonderful translucence, this priceless translucence of West Coast water that somewhere between green and blue, which is so hard to capture and so wonderful to try to capture. Here in this painting, I'm really trying to, I'm fascinated by red rocks. And I wanted to create, I have a memory of red rocks from where I spent my first seven years in Helensburgh. So the, a place where, where river meets sea. And that's, although again, there is no set place at the back of this. That's what's in my mind, something of the world that I grew up with in, in early childhood. And I loved finding those, those red rocks and just the edge of the sea coming in against them, quite a boisterous sea and a moving, constantly moving sea with white, white edge to it. This is one of the biggest paintings that I've actually ever, ever worked on. And it is actually inspired by a specific place. It's the hills of Harris and really that wonderful, most wonderful series of beaches around Luskintyre. And I have a sense of the hills around Luskintyre. That's part of the what makes the beaches so incredibly powerful, is the blackness, the darkness of them. And that's what I wanted to capture in this painting, the contrast between the gold, the wonderful priceless gold of the sands, and that charcoal darkness of the skies. 
and especially powerful, not in this painting, but when you see the sands of Luskintar under thundery skies, darkening skies, it's just, the effect is quite incredible. So here all the elements come together. Big sea, huge sea, because it's the sea of the outer isles, the outer Hebrides. Huge sea, huge sky, changing all the time the wonder of transient light which photographers come to Scotland to find. And also the change of the beach, because it's, it's in constant, it's never standing still. I'm always amazed going back to islands and hearing from locals that, that the sands have changed and they do change because of the, the tide. So this was a wonderful one to work on for me. And along, these big paintings take a long time to swirl at, to create what feels to me like the best melding of land, sea and sky. All the paintings in this new exhibition of, of work are listed on my, my website, which is just all the W's dot Kenneth Stephen dot co dot UK and my Stephen is S T E V E N. From time to time I I do a bit about a painting, a little piece to, to talk about the background to it, to show it if it's something new and that I feel excited about on my Facebook page and that post is called Imagining Things rather than rather than coming under my name. So from time to time I will I will I will have things have things there. <laughs> 